Now that we've talked about how to use our arms to make marks, let's talk about three principles, or really simple rules, to keep in mind when making marks. Again, throughout this course, we're being super conscious about how we're doing things. We're not just focusing on the result we're aiming for, we are thinking about how we get there every step of the way. Here's what I want you to think about when you draw your marks throughout this lesson and beyond. Number one, your marks must flow continuously. No chicken scratching or breaking your strokes into individual marks. No. Consistent, continuous strokes. Number two, your marks must flow smoothly. It is natural for students to focus on accuracy, so they might be susceptible to letting their lines wobble and waver. But what we want is for students to strive always to maintain a smooth and consistent flow every time. And lastly, your marks must maintain a consistent trajectory. Don't zigzag your marks back and forth. When that trajectory changes, start a new stroke. Now, don't worry, we're going to look at each individual principle or rule in a little bit more detail. First, the mark must flow continuously. The most common approach I see from beginners is called chicken scratching, and that's what I showed before, where they will build up a single line by drawing a lot of smaller strokes one on top of the other, gradually making their, from one, their way from one point to the next. This results in a line that feels broken, and when you use it to establish a form, which we'll get into in later lessons, it will not feel solid. Instead, draw a single continuous stroke from start to end. There will be circumstances later in the course when we draw through forms, that is, drawing them like we have x-ray vision. Even in circumstances like this, where you want to distinguish a line from being in front and behind, don't resort to dotted or dashed lines. Every mark must still be drawn continuously from end to end, unbroken. And you will struggle with this, but don't worry. Just strive for it and you'll get there. But if you change the rules that you're trying to follow because they're hard to follow, then you know, you're not going to make any progress in that direction. Second, your marks must flow smoothly. This is where drawing from the shoulder really comes into play. Students are often heavily preoccupied with accuracy, and they will happily draw slowly and carefully, even if it wobbles terribly as it follows the specific path that they're aiming for. That is not what we're after here. Our first priority is always going to be achieving a smooth flow, even if it undermines your accuracy. And it will impede your accuracy you'll find that, you, that you're not immediately able to hit the points that you're aiming for, at least not as easily. But we do have a remedy for this. It's called the ghosting method, and it'll be introduced a little later. In the, uh, there's actually an exercise for it called the ghosted lines exercise. And you'll be able to learn how to divide the process of mark making into individual steps where each step has its own responsibility and where when we execute the mark, we are only focusing on the smooth, confident execution, not on precision and accuracy. Lastly, your marks must maintain a consistent trajectory. To put it simply, don't zigzag your lines. When you hit a sudden corner, stop the stroke and start another instead of trying to repeat a pattern. When we zigzag patterns, sometimes people will do this sort of thing for like grass or fur. They just fall into making the same kind of action over and over and over, and they're not thinking about what each individual one should look like and how it should be designed. It puts us into an autopilot mode, and it makes it much more difficult for us to continue thinking consciously about how they're meant to be made and it'll make us get sloppy. 
as we work on building our instincts throughout this course, ensuring that we're always conscious about our actions is what will drive that development. So don't fall into the pattern of just repeating motions on autopilot. Like everything you come across throughout this course, these rules only apply in the context of the course itself. So this lesson and the lessons after it, but not anything that you draw outside of its bounds. When you're doing the assigned exercises, you will be expected to adhere to these rules to the best of your ability. And you will slip up, you will make mistakes, but you'll also catch yourself and reassert that conscious control. So always strive to be aware of what you're doing, but have patience with yourself and don't expect perfection.